In this video, I'll be going over some super easy tips and tricks any player can learn. From specific tricks that lead to free kills to general tips that will help you in any situation, you will improve from this video. And this first tip I'll be going over is going to help you with every operator and it's going to be choosing comfortable attachments. There isn't one attachment setup that's going to work for everybody, but there are generally good attachment setups for each operator. And there are differences between console and PC. On PC, it's much easier to control horizontal recoil, whereas on console, it's much easier to control vertical recoil. And also with the release of year 9 season 1, 1.5s were basically removed and replaced with ACOGs. And so now if you're rushing and planning on getting into close range gunfights, you'll have to think about choosing a hollow sight to make it easier. So if you're on console and having trouble controlling horizontal recoil, then you can use a compensator. If you're on PC and having trouble controlling vertical recoil, instead of using extended barrel, use flash hider. If you're more of an aggressive player, you could run hollow sight. You get the gist. If you want me to make an attachment and loadout guide for every operator, then let me know in the comments. And once you've perfected your attachments, you need to perfect your sensitivity. The best way to do this is to come into a target drill on coastline and come up to this wall. What you want to do is look for this line right here and this line right here. You want to flick from back and forth to each line while hip firing. You want to try to get the center dot right on top of the line and if you notice you're stopping too early that means you're under flicking. If you notice you're stopping too late that means you're over flicking. So what you can do is keep adjusting your sensitivity according to that. So if you're under flicking increase your sensitivity. If you're over flicking decrease your sensitivity. So keep adjusting your sensitivity until you're pretty good at it and also keep in mind your hip firing sensitivity is kind of hard so yeah keep that in mind the next step you want to do is adjust your 1x and your 2.5 sensitivities so as you can see right now i have a 1x on and what i'm going to do is actually go into my controls go into my settings right here i'm going to go into my ads and all i'm going to do is just increase this to maybe like 75 so now i don't have my sensitivity on so it's going to be more accurate to what you're seeing so now what i'm going to do is ads with a 1x on and i'm going to be flicking doing the same thing and as you can see since I'm not used to this, I'm kind of over flicking. It's kind of hard to line it up. So what you would do if you're over flicking, you would go into your sensitivity and lower it. And once you've gotten yours, you know, dialed in, what you can do is equip an ACOG. And now you want to go through the same process with the ACOG on. And keep in mind, after you do find your sensitivity, you're not going to be perfect with it because you're basically learning a new sensitivity. But once you do get used to it, you'll be much more comfortable. And that's why I don't use advanced settings because they make this whole process much more complicated. And if you want a way to get used to your new sensitivity, what you can do is go into a shooting range or a free-for-all and just practice and after a while the new sensitivity that you're using is going to feel perfect and you'll probably won't need to change it for the next few years so now that you're going to be much more comfortable since you've perfected your attachments and sensitivity we can go over how to use them much better and specifically what i'm going to be talking about is holding angles in siege there's a thing called peekers advantage is one of the most useful things to take advantage of and you have to keep this in mind when you're holding angles because peekers advantage can easily be used against you if i'm holding an angle like this right up against the doorway and I'm exposing too much of my body, when someone swings out, they're going to see me first because of peeker's advantage and I'm most likely going to die. So what you want to do is back up from the doorway and hold a much tighter angle. Backing up from the doorway is going to make much less of your body exposed. And you might be like, why would you hold such a tight angle? Well, when you hold a tight angle like this, obviously you're going to see less of the enemy when they swing, but you are going to be much more safe and not get pre-fired. And the other main advantage of holding such tight angles like this is once you see the person swing out, you know they have to be on the other side. So what you can do is get that information and then swing out. And when you hold a touch a tight angle like this and you see them swing out and then you swing out and pre-fire, you're basically turning the advantage in your favor because you are going to get peekers advantage and you are also going to be pre-firing. So always keep in mind whenever you're holding an angle, don't be right up against your cover and also make sure you're holding a more tighter angle and then swinging out. The next tip I'll be going over is a super easy way to get sneaky free kills and it's going to be to melee utility. Obviously every piece of utility can't be meleeed but there is a lot that can be. And people are so used to shooting utility they don't even realize that they can melee most utility. The main advantage of trap utility like legion mines, frost mats, thorn traps and things like that is the sound cue the defenders get. If you throw down a legion mine, that legion mine basically watches your flank for you and if someone hits it or shoots it then you'll know they are there. So instead of shooting it and giving them that audio cue, you should melee it. This works for almost anything you can shoot, you can also melee it to not give sound cues. And not to mention, it saves a few bullets. And speaking of saving bullets, the next tip I'll be going over is one shotting hatches. This seems insignificant until you realize how much time it can save and how it can save you from a death. A lot of people when they shoot open hatches, it takes a like two or three shots to shoot open the hatch. But as you can see, there is a way to one shot hatches. The way that you do this is you back up a little bit from the hatch and then you hip fire it. If you look at the spread of my shotgun, it covers almost a whole hatch, whereas if I'm closer, it won't. 
This is the way to one-shot hatches, and if you're running from someone or trying to flank someone or any situation where you just need to one-shot hatches, make sure you line it up. Okay, and I of course, you know, mess it up, but you, you get the point. The next tip I'll be going over is not getting skipped over and knowing when to give up on a roam. The main objective for a roamer is to waste time and be a nuisance, and you can't do that if the attackers aren't trying to clear you. This is one of the most common mistakes when it comes to roaming. You see it all the time. It's a 1v5 and the last person alive is someone on third floor roaming when the attackers are just flooding sight. If you aren't getting droned or shot at in the first minute and a half into the round, then usually you're getting skipped over, so you might want to switch up your roam or rotate back to site. The next tip I'll be going over is not overcomplicating map control. And if you don't know what map control is, basically whoever is controlling a certain area of the map is holding the map control. So if I'm attacking CCTV on Clubhouse and I drop the Lodgy Hatch, I now have control of this area and continue to set up my attack easier. Map control is the key to winning rounds in Siege and it's what the attackers are trying to take and what the defenders are trying to defend. And when people learn this, they try to overcomplicate the concept of map control. On attack, drone, take the map control if it's free. Drone, take the map control if it's free. If it's not free, then think of a way how to clear whoever's contesting you. Like if they're holding an Azami, use your utility to destroy the Azami barriers and take the gunfight. On defense, you should be holding map control on areas that your team is not. It wastes more of the attacker's time and doesn't allow them to set up their attack and be right outside of sight. The next tip I'll be going over is punching crouch holes in barricades. What I mean by that is if you walk up to a barricade, the normal way most people open up the barricade is they just punch it three times or they punch it twice and then vault through it. Now, if you were listening to that, that was very loud. So if a defender is nearby, he's most likely gonna hear that. The better way to do it is come up to the doorway and you wanna look for panels three. So if you can see there's little lines in the barricades, you just go up one, two, three, there's panel three, you punch right there. Then you go up one, two, and then punch it again. And now you can just crouch through and it'll be pretty much silent instead of this loud noise when you actually punch the barricade. And as you can see, once you get the hang of it, it becomes super easy and you can actually do it super quick. You can do the exact same thing on Maverick. Just go up to the door and find the exact same panels, just like this. And all you wanna do is just basically tap the button for a second. And as you can see, it's going to open up the same amount of the barricade as if you were punching it. And then boom, you can do it on the next one and you can just freely crouch through. And this torch right here basically makes no noise. So when you're doing this, you're pretty much silent, like pretty much no one's going to hear this. So this is going to allow for some really sneaky kills if someone is near you. And just to prove why this is so important, I'm going to do some before and afters of when you open up a barricade normally versus when you do either of the methods I just showed. Now, as you can see, it makes a pretty big difference, but now just imagine that it was masked by gunshots and explosions that normally go on during the round. It would be much more quiet than it already is. So the next tip I'll be going over is how to actually open up hatches solo. So if you see a catered hatch, the normal way to open it up would usually be using an EMP on it or maybe like a twitch drone to destroy it. But that requires a teammate and there's a lot of situations where you can't really rely on your team. So to get rid of the cade claw on the hatch, you should be either Habana, Thermite, or Ace. For Ace, so all you have to do is throw two ace charges on either side of the hatch just like this And as you can see, it opens up the hatch no matter what for thermite What you want to do is just place your exothermic charge right to the side of the hatch Just like that blow it up and you will see the hatch is going to open no matter what. And for opening the hatch solo with Habana, all you wanna do is find the Cade Claw, whether you're on a drone or just, you know, your teammate tells you whatever. And once you've found it, you need to shoot two x Karos pellets on whatever side it's on. So in this example, it's right on this side. So I would shoot two right there. And once you activate it, it's going to destroy the Cade Claw. And then as you can see, it's destroyed. And then next, what you would do is place your actual Habana pellets onto the hatch and what I would do is place only two at one time in case they're impact drinking but as you can see you can open the hatch normally now once you've destroyed the cave claw and they can't pick up that cave claw anymore obviously so yeah one thing to keep in mind is you have to do this on hatches on soft floors so you can actually activate your ability all right the next tip i'm going to go over is another way to hard breach without needing a teammate to get rid of the wall denial so if you're attacking and the main wall is muted as ace or abana you have to get rid of the mute jammer because if you don't you can only open the top parts of the wall which is going to really do nothing so what you can do instead is bring thermite and then you want to repel up onto the wall and then place your uh 
exothermic charge. And so what this is going to do is since you placed your exothermic charge all the way up there, it isn't going to be affected by the mute jammer on the other side. And as you can see, when I activate it, it's going to blow up the whole wall as if there's nothing on it. And another thing to keep in mind is if you can't repel up on a wall, like obviously I can on this wall, but let's say I couldn't repel onto this wall. What you can do is come into the corner of the wall and then look up as high as possible right here the immune jammer on the other side of the wall isn't going to affect my thermite but this only works sometimes and as you can see once i blow it up it only affects the right side and not the middle so if you didn't want the right side then obviously this isn't going to work but it's still a very good thing to know and the next tip i'll be going over is shooting to conceal sound cues siege is a game of sound cues it's one of the most important aspects to winning rounds so you want to do your best to not give away sound cues that's why earlier i showed you how to break through barricades quieter but there's many more ways to conceal sound cues. And that's why this next tip is a way to do it with gunshots. The times that you should be doing this are whenever you go crouched or prone. Anytime that you go crouched or prone, you can shoot just to conceal the sound of it, or whenever you're repelling in, or whenever you're dropping a hatch. There's a lot of situations you should be doing this in. But just to prove why this is so important, I'm gonna be doing a few before and after tests of shooting to conceal sound cues. And as you can see, masking the sound cues with gunshots worked out pretty well. And if you were in the middle of the round, it would sound like any other gunshots you hear normally. The next tip I'll be going over is about isolating angles. Not isolating angles is a really common mistake a lot of players make. And isolating angles just means instead of peeking out with your whole body exposed, you actually quick peek and isolate each angle. A lot of people will rush this step when peeking angles and end up exposing too much of their body. When the enemy could be on any one of these angles in this room, and the only angle they have to worry about is the doorway, which you're swinging from. That's why quick peeking is one of the best skills to learn and one of the best ways to safely gather information. So instead of dying without being able to really even fight back, quick peek each angle one by one to clear each angle. The next step I'll be going over allows you to get some really good valk cams and it's going to be bouncing valk cams. That sounds kind of weird and if you don't know what I mean by bouncing valk cams, I basically just mean by throwing one valk cam down and then bouncing the other one off of it. There are a lot of situations where you can bounce your valk cams off other valk cams to get some really good spots. So I'm going to show you a few and show you how you can think of some on your own. Some of the best examples are when you use it to put your valve cams in plants. As you can see, if I throw a valve cam into this bush, it's going to break the bush, which is just going to make your valve cam easy to spot. You can kind of cheese it if you throw it up against the wall. Well, messed it up that time. Like if I throw it up against the wall at certain points, I can kind of get it in the bush, but it's still kind of easy to spot. So what you can do is throw one valve cam onto the wall and then throw the other one onto that valve cam and then it's gonna bounce into the plant. As you can see, the valve cam is still gonna be able to go through the plants, and this isn't the best example, but it's still gonna give you good enough intel while being super hidden. Another way to use bouncing valve cams is to get them in spots you normally can't. As an example, if I'm on Oregon, if I throw my cam into this corner, as you can see, it's super easy to spot. It does give good intel. As you can see, you can see the whole master, you can see closet, trophy, whatever, but it's super easy to spot, and most of the time it's going to get destroyed. So what you can do to get into a better spot is throw one valve cam onto this dark spot Spot right there and then bounce the other one off of it pick this one up and now it's going to be in a really good spot it's very hidden up there you're not really going to see that as an attacker you're most likely going to be focusing on other things and you're not really going to see that and as you can see it's still going to give you very good intel you can still see into closet and in the trophy and you can see the master walk-in with audio and you can do this on a lot of different spots to actually create your own spots so as an example i'm just going to show you a random one if i throw one valve cam like right there and then bounce the other one off of it it's going to land onto that box and then i could pick this one up now this valve cam is horrible but you can the point you can create your own spots and you might find some really good ones and some that aren't really known and the next step i'll be going over is prepping windows and what i mean by prepping windows if you come to a wall and you hit the bottom part twice like this then you'll be able to vault through it. And if you do that, the attackers would never know compared to when if I hit it in the middle, obviously the attackers are gonna hear that, so yeah. And you can pair this with like maybe a default cam, go onto your cams, if you see somebody, then you could run out of a window to kill them. You could go on your Solus scanner to see the devices and you know, go run out then. You could do it on Pulse, like I have right here. As you can see, if I see an enemy on the other side, 
I, you know, just punch it twice and then run out. And another thing is, is it's pretty much silent. So you can do this even if the attackers are on the other side nearby. So let's do a sound test just so you can hear how hard it is to hear it. The diffuser is no longer in your possession. Op 4 eliminated all friendlies. Now, never mind. I said it's hard to hear. Actually, it's just silent. You actually can't hear anything until the glass breaks. So yeah, use this in your games. But with that, let's move on to the next tip. And it's going to be something pretty similar to prepping windows. And it's going to be shooting glass off of windows. If someone were to repel on the other side of this window, you would be able to hear significantly better if you shot the glass off than rather if you didn't. So let's get into the before and after. So as you can see from that sound test, it's a pretty big difference and this will lead to a lot of free kills and save you from a lot of surprise deaths. And all you really have to do is just go up to a window and then shoot a few times at the window and as you can see the glass is going to break and it's going to save you a lot of times. If you feel you improved from this video or you enjoyed the video, consider liking and subscribing and if you want to watch more of my content then click the video popping up on your screen.